Hi, welcome to Cardstock Modeling. I'm your host, Sam Miller, and in this episode, I'd like to share with you some techniques that I use in Photoshop. A technique that I use in Photoshop is changing the color of a building's siding or trim or doors or windows. So let's take a look and see how that's done. The first thing you'll want to do is to open up the PDF image in Photoshop. And there's our image in Photoshop. Next, you'll want to save the image as a Photoshop page. Now, this image is a Photoshop file. The next thing I did is to go ahead and copy that image. So you highlight the image and then copy it. And then I've placed it on another page, which would look like that. So now we have the image on a separate page to change. And the image on the right is the original one. Now let's go through the steps necessary to then have the image look like this. The first thing we have to do is to isolate the image from the white paper background. So to do that, you want to come over and under tools and select the magic wand tool. And the magic wand tool. And then for settings, you want to have a tolerance of about 20 and then do not click the contiguous box. Then you'll come down on the white and just click on it. And you can see it's highlighted all the white and the edges around the, the item are not included. Then the next thing you'll want to do is you want to come in and under select, put down here inverse. So that means you've selected the image, the boards and everything else. So now that you've selected the image, you want to come and create a new layer. You have your new layer and you want to go up to image and, and go to that layer and then you want to go up to edit, paste special, paste in place. Then what I do is do an, a command T which will click on that item and move it. As you can see, we have an exact duplicate. So then I'll go in and label that layer as um, image or color change. Okay. Now that that's done, the next thing I'm going to do is to duplicate that layer. And in this case, I'm going to call it um, desaturated image. Okay. Now that I'm on the desaturated image layer, I will go up to Image, Adjustments, and Desaturate. And in this case, you're going to see it's now gray. Now, if you close that layer, if, uh, then you can see right behind it is the original image that's on the right. So there's our desaturated layer. Sometimes I'll go up and maybe change the opacity on that to about 70% to make it a little bit lighter and to allow some bleed through from the original image. So the next step in the coloration process is when I'm on the desaturated image, 
I'm going to go up to the Magic Wand Selection Tool and click on it. Then I'm going to come down in here and uh, select one of the areas of gray on that layer. And you can see it highlights it. The next thing I'm going to do is to copy that, edit, copy, and then what I'm going to do is create a new layer and call this one Color Change 1. In this case, I'm going to call it Blue. Now that I'm on that layer, and I've already copied the content, I'm going to uh, go to Edit, I'm going to fill it. In this case, I've already picked the blue color over here on my, uh, for my foreground, and I'm going to choose the foreground color. Hit OK. And voila, I deselect. We've got that. And what I'll probably do is go in here and make, change the opacity of that layer to about 80%, something like that. And you can go back to your desaturated layer and increase that so it's totally gray. And now, now what I'm going to do is go back to the desaturated layer and I'm going to go into Image, Adjust, and to change the shadow and highlights. So now that gives me a um, less severe desaturated image. And I can go in lighten the shadows or darken the shadows. About that's the way it was. And in the highlights you can change those slightly too. And you can even say show more options highlights, adjust, just have fun to your content, content with this. I sort of like that uh, right there, there, just a little bit darker, and hit OK. So here you can see the difference between the original on the right and the changes we made in the left, and it didn't take too many steps. What I urge you to do with each of the tools that I've showed you in Photoshop is to play around with them, become familiar with them, to try to find out the variances that you can create just with slight movement of the extent of that particular tool. Hopefully this episode has given you some encouragement and some ideas of how to use tools in Photoshop to further customize cardstock kits to your own personal liking and characteristics. Again, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.